All people really want when they want a starter home is a simple small house with a beautiful little tiny backyard and a place to call their own. That's the American dream, right? Years ago, people could easily buy a home with one income. One. Now, people are barely struggling with two incomes to be able to afford a home. So today we're going to be talking about some of the reasons why the American dream is dying, if not nearly dead. And we're going to be talking about some solutions so we can get more people into that American starter home dream. Of January of 2021, there was an idea that there was going to be a program that came out from the Biden administration that they were going to give a first-time home buyer's incentive to get more people to buy houses. I had tons of subscribers asking me about this, and I kept saying how incredibly stupid it was because we didn't have enough houses on the market to even have this plan in place in the first place. We had done this in 2008 and 2009 during the last housing crash because there were so many houses that had gone into foreclosure and they were trying to drive the market back up. Our problem today is nowhere near that. We don't have enough houses on the market and to have that kind of incentive was really stupid. And if you don't believe me, Australia during the pandemic did this and let's just see what happened to their home prices. Politicians of course shed crocodile tears about uh, it's so sad that house prices are so expensive and we'll give you $10,000 of uh, first home buyers grants which drive house prices up because everybody has more money. It's a silly uh, game that where people pretend that they that they care. They regret it now. It was nothing but a futile mistake and it did exactly what I told everybody it was going to do. It drove the prices up even higher. And I know it sounds like a really good bonus for people that are trying to get into their first home or our starter home. It isn't really necessarily a good idea. So if you're still thinking that this might be something that you're looking forward to in the future, unless there's a huge supply of houses, I can't see the government doing this kind of program again. I hope they don't because it's really not going to help anybody. A hot topic on a lot of YouTube real estate channels right now is that interest rates are likely to go up in 2022. And of course, if interest rates go up, that means less people are going to want to buy, but home prices go down, but the supply of houses go up. And yes, that could be promising if you have a big down payment, but then you're still going to be paying a lot more if you're going to get a mortgage. If you're a cash buyer, this is probably going to work out really great for you. But in most cases, if you're buying your first starter home, you're not buying a cash. Now, some of these YouTube channels have been saying that the interest rates are going to go sky high and that's what's going to cause a huge housing crash. Here's the thing, the Fed doesn't care about the affordability of homes throughout the United States. That is not their job. Their job is to only care about the financial health of the United States. They know if they boost up interest rates on housing to an exponential amount like they did in the 70s, they know that's going to cause a financial collapse in other sectors. And I know there's been some people that have been speculating it's going to go up as high as 10%, but you know how YouTubers are. It creates clicks, but that isn't going to happen. The Fed does not want a financial instability in the housing market, whether it makes it affordable or unaffordable. They only care about the health of the financial system as a whole, and they're going to keep interest rates in check with the rest of the financial sectors. Now, a lot of expert economists have come up with a fantastic solution for the affordability crisis because they believe that it isn't necessarily that America need to get into a home. They just need an affordable housing option and their solution for the affordable housing option is to build more affordable rental units. This is the part where I've been saying forever. This is a terrible way for people that are Gen X, Gen Z, and anybody coming up after that. Um, we're becoming a renter society where people would rather just go rent a house instead of putting a big down payment and being locked into the same space, you know, especially with remote work. It's like, dude, people can go live wherever these days and, and do their job in some places. So I, I think, yeah, people are going to be less likely to buy out of their own, you know, decision and mm -hmm. out of circumstance too, because they're just like, man, it, it just doesn't make sense to, to buy this house. Like it's the price is crazy compared to what I can go rent for. And, you know, I don't have to do the maintenance and all the repairs, like my landlord will do all that. And yeah, I think that's where, where the world's going. Look at what this one company is doing out of Arizona. Over 3,000 homes are being built just to rent them out. That is 3,000 affordable homes that are taken out of people in Arizona's hands 
for rental units. Look how they're trying to sell this new dream to us. Tricon Residential provided an update on its active build to rent community. The communities are located across 10 metropolitan statistical areas. Like people in those areas wouldn't like to own those homes. Give me a break. Including Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, Sacramento, California, Inland Empire, California, Phoenix, Jacksonville, Florida, and Reno, Nevada. Who would have known that it's in the hottest markets that are have the fastest growth throughout the United States? I mean, I wonder why they picked those areas. Companies like this burn my rear end and they should burn your rear end too because it's literally taking the starter home dream away from people. I mean, with this, they're just basically telling you, you could, you could have the little patch of grass. You can have your own home. You're just gonna have to uh, pay that rent up to us. The biggest problem with this, of course, is that it's not allowing for people to gain generational wealth like our parents did. And with that being said, it's not just the young people that are affected by the starter home problem. It's our grandparents too, because many of them live in starter homes and they can't even afford to sell their starter home to get another house. They have basically been priced out of their own housing market. And even if they weren't priced out of their market, there isn't enough homes in the area that they wanna move to that could fit their price point. So they're deciding to retire in place and I can't really blame them. So why are companies like Tricon and other big equity firms deciding to do this? Well, of course, it's to offset inflation, but it's also because of this. Invitation Homes is the largest provider of single family homes for rent in the United States. Reported that 2020 was the most profitable year ever despite the coronavirus pandemic. Last year, Invitation Homes raked in 50 million more in rent on those in houses than it did in 2019. It isn't just one firm. It isn't just two firms. They're all over the country. And I know that a lot of people have given me a lot of guff by saying, private equity firms are not trying to take over the housing market. They only take up a small portion of my area. They they only take up a small portion right now or they take up a small portion and they have a different name of a company so you think it's just a little private investor that's you know just picking up three homes but they actually are owned by these other big companies you know it may sound like a conspiracy theory now but slowly and surely as that deck of cards gets piled up it's it's going to start falling apart and we're going to see that hand fold out right in front of us and you're going to remember my words <laughs> They're trying to make us a renter's nation and corporations are the ones that are trying to do it. Do you know what brought me to even film this video? A few days ago, my mom and I were driving in a car and we were going through this detour through a neighborhood that had smaller little homes. And my mom says, you know what a shame it is just to see how many kids you don't see playing outside. And I'm like, of course you're not going to see kids playing outside here. And she said, well, why not? And I said, because these houses, do you know how much they cost? They're $400,000. Young families with young kids typically can't afford $400,000 for a house. She was like, I had no idea that the cost of homes for small affordable homes have gone up that much. Do you know that 10 years ago, the median cost for a home in the United States was around $225,000. Today, that number is $408,000 for the median price home in the United States. And we all know that American wages have not gone up with the amount of inflation that we've had in the last 10 years. That's been well documented. Now, the simple solution to this problem, many people will say, is to build more homes. Well, of course you could build more homes, but the problem is there's several issues with this. First of all, builders have no incentive to build more affordable houses. Secondly of all, Land development is extremely expensive and there's a lot of red tape when it comes to putting in a subdivision. Thirdly of all, and most importantly, is our infrastructure throughout the United States is terrible. It's happening all over the United States. They just keep putting up these subdivisions and they don't address the infrastructure itself. Now, of course, you've seen all the bills that come through with the infrastructure plan, but from what I'm reading, it isn't going to be enough to fix everything. But if you build the infrastructure ahead of time, then you build the houses afterwards, the area will start growing on its own. We have plenty of land to do it. It's just nobody's incentivized to do it. And politicians love to give lip service when it comes to affordable housing options. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you lean on. They are notorious for saying, we're addressing the home affordability crisis. And then when they get elected, it's like, oh, it ended up being a task that we didn't expect to take as long or it's all horse pucky. 
You know how they are. They just need to get elected and they'll just say whatever they need to say to get elected. You know how they are. But here's the other thing. Instead of like going with urban sprawl, they call it, I mean, it sounds so insidious. You could do other things like work with the neighborhoods that already exist that are in a stage of blithe, but it could be fixed up again. Here's something that they did in Atlanta and it, and it could work. The Grove Park Foundation has just received provisional approval for a million dollar grant to try to stop displacement. The foundation wants to use it to buy homes, flip them and sell them to those making 80% or less of Metro Atlanta's area median income. I think Atlanta's really onto something because there's plenty of areas, even in our, my own city of Baton Rouge, that could use a little facelift. The thing is, is that I hope, I hope, I didn't get to see their full plan, that they didn't allow for anybody to turn any of those homes into rental homes, even if it was somebody that was living in the house and later on decided to rent it. I'm hoping they put in the covenants they can't allow for that. And I also hope they do not allow any private equity firms to come in and scoop out those houses and turn them into rentals. I look forward to seeing what actually happens with those homes because it sounds like a really good plan. Sorry, I had to open the window for my cat. Now let's talk about the positive stuff. Enough of the doom and gloom. This article came out from Housing Wire that said, the FHL banks are under pressure to invest in more affordable housing. The National Network of Federal Home Loans Banks expects to be required to increase its share of investments of affordable housing. The push will come from Congress where the COVID-19 pandemic rekindled discussions about the program being established in the 1990s. The resources help families with less than 80% or less than the area median income for a down payment or closing costs. For example, it also helps rental housing, where at least 20% of the units are occupied by families with an income at 50% or less than the median. There is currently legislation to address this problem. We'll see if it goes through. We can all cross our fingers, but that is good news. There was something else I came across when I was researching this, and this was a great solution that has been put in place by many areas and many local governments, and it's called affordable housing bonds, and this is how it works. Housing bonds are debt securities a variation of multiple revenue bonds issued by the state or local governments to raise money for affordable housing development projects. Housing bonds provide the government with cheap financing and the lender, especially those with upper tax brackets and tax advantages. This is the best part. Mortgage provided through the housing bonds are restricted for first-time home buyers who earn no more than the area median income. And the price of the home purchased is limited to 90% of the average area's purchase price. So that's one way we can tackle the affordability crisis. And here's another. Zoning. I know that's gonna sound incredibly weird to you. Of course, everything's zoned. But if you notice that a lot of areas are zoned single family dwellings. If we made a lot of those areas multi-family homes, you could put two houses on one lot. That's two people with a mortgage, that's two people that are paying property taxes, and that's two people that are finding an affordable home in their area. You could easily turn those into triplexes or even fourplexes. It's one of those things that we need to start thinking about. This is one of those things that even California has started doing. They've turned a lot of areas that were zoned single family dwellings and turn them into duplexes and triplexes and multifamily units. And in some areas they're saying you can't even put a single family house anymore. You have to turn it into a duplex, triplex, or fourplex. Another way to address the zoning issue is there is tons of commercial properties. I know we have them here in Baton Rouge and I'm sure you have them in your area that are sitting there vacant. Strip malls, shopping malls. I mean, you remember those? We all went to the shopping mall. Those easily could be turned into affordable condos. I often have said that it'd be awesome if they could turn an old mall into an assisted living home where people could own the little condos and then the bottom layer of the mall would be like medical facilities and it'd be so simple for people that were up in age to be able to go to their doctor because it would be on the lower level not only that you could use that little food court area for like coffee shops and stuff it would easily bring back the mall in a beneficial way without tearing down the whole building reusing that building for a good purpose who's with me on that all these ideas are really good ideas but they're just ideas unless you bring them up to community leaders that are in the planning and zoning. If you're interested on in getting more affordable houses, bring up the idea of doing duplexes and triplexes. And I guarantee that most of your local uh, officials haven't even thought about rezoning some areas for more affordable houses. And in order to make that even on their radar, you're gonna have to show up to some of these planning and zoning meetings. There's always a lot of people that have really loud voices. I want you to be one of those people for more affordable houses in your specific area. Now I wanna pose a question to you. Do you think there's gonna be more starter homes being being built in the next 10 years or do you think that that number is going to continue to drop? I'm interested to see what your answers are. To watch more videos about the affordability crisis here in the United States, go ahead and click this video right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this 
because good real estate information matters.